Um, all School Meeting is this really wonderful space where students can bring issues to the school and help make decisions about how the school is going to be run or things that are going to go on, go on in the school. So the students really have this, this power in, in some sense over the space that they're living in. It's really exciting to, to watch them learn how to use that space. And instead of, instead of identifying a problem and saying, hey, this is the most horrible thing in the world, they say, hey, this is the most horrible thing in the world, and how can I change it? How can I fix it? So the students, instead of just being complainers, they become problem solvers. My first year we did a trip to Penn Center, which is this little community down in South Carolina, the Scullow community, and we do service work down there. We did it my first year, and we want to do it again my second year, um, and we usually do it every other year. But we were trying for it, and we wrote out this whole proposal, um, and it was one of my fellow classmates, Elliot, who did a lot of work on you know, gas prices and what it would cost and, you know, which vans we would take and, you know, worked out all the details and, I mean, down to who would do chores when and what meals and stuff. But there's an example of someone taking on a, you know, non-expected, you know, you don't have to do this. It's like, well, I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. Um, and going all the way through with it and doing hard work and, you know, academic work. Field trips are just a really a really unique thing that the school has. They're when the school splits into three groups and there's the school has three main vans that we would use. And each one of those groups goes to a different place in the United States in a different van and um, goes and does a different thing. And it usually involves service and learning, but also a lot of fun. Field trips were definitely my favorite time. I got to know people better. I got way close up information that I never would have gotten, you know, sitting here reading a textbook. On the 18 day field trips, she was extremely excited about what she saw in West Virginia. She got off the plane when she came home after that experience and she said, Mom, we're changing all our light bulbs to the curly ones because they draw so much less power and in West Virginia they're blowing the tops off mountains to get coal. So she feels capable of doing the things that she wants to do in the world. Um, in college, I majored in chemistry at Kenyon College, and um, I'm hoping to go to vet school in the next couple of years. Like all my life, anyone I meet, they tell, tell me vet school is hard to get into. But AMS, it's one of those places that you say, hey, this is what I want to do. And the staff really make an effort to say, OK, well, how can we make that happen? Um, and so AMS really put that mentality in my mind that if there's a challenge ahead of me, instead of just saying, oh, it's going to be hard, so I might as, not, might as well not try. I say, well, it's going to be hard. What can I think of that I can do that will make it easier and make it possible? So what was great about my AMS academic experience was that I really learned to think that at every point, all through the day, in everything that we were doing, we were being challenged to think about what we were doing, what its impact was on other people, what its impact was on the world. Um, we were being forced to synthesize our ideas with other people's ideas. Um, you, you know, the process of asking adolescents to reach consensus is such an intellectually challenging exercise. And when I got to high school, I found that I was, and I went to a very academically rigorous high school, I found that I was able to think much more deeply about things than my fellow students who had gone to more traditional middle schools. Um, in terms of college, I went to Harvard, another friend from AMS went to Yale, lots of kids went to UNC, a couple kids went to NYU. You know, when I applied to Harvard, my essay was about AMS and what going to AMS had taught me about how to learn, how to live in the world, um, how it had affected my whole relationship to education, thinking of education, as Elizabeth Morgan said, or I think it was she who said it, um, as life itself, not just as preparation. Like what I'm doing for the book that I'm writing this year, um, I'm writing the background of the characters. And so, and In terms of what we're doing now, um, I'm a writer, my friend Heidi is a tenured professor at SUNY, um, my friend Susie runs an art business, um, Issa's a doctor, Ellie's a nurse, um, and, and part of what I, you know, 
think is important is the fact that I know what all these people are doing and I'm still in touch with them and we're still very, very close. The change in Peter is that he's really become more himself. It's a little like that idea of sculpture as cutting away all the parts of the rock that aren't the sculpture. I think in some ways AMS gives kids the liberty to release that, that mask, the persona that uh, so many of us, not just children, but adults too, put up to defend ourselves from the world because we're afraid we'll be hurt. And AMS allows people to drop those defenses. And by dropping them, you see suddenly this amazing person underneath. In your normal public school or private school, you know, the first thing they ask for David is, where's his medication? Yeah. And we said, well, we don't believe in that, you know, we like David the way he is. And so when he came here, he could, he could be himself. It's, it's really, I guess you could say it's an alternative to, to Riddler because, you know, you're grounded, you're, um, you know, the lifestyle, the food, uh, we don't know, but it worked. I brought a kid here who was depressed, who did not like school and who was not, who was not going to succeed in the way that we were going. She just wasn't going to. So it's, that's changed. I mean, she's, she's coming away. She's sparkling and happy. I think AMS has made me a lot more self-confident. When I came here at first, I was really shy. Like, I probably wouldn't be doing this right now because I'd be absolutely freaked out. But it's really taught me that I have a voice more than, you know, just sitting there and not saying anything. I could say something and someone's going to listen to me. And if they don't, then I'll try.